All right, hello everybody. Welcome to Heifer USA, coming to you live from Perryville, Arkansas, here in uh, the beautiful Heifer Ranch. My name is Tyler Pearson, and I'm joined by our poultry specialist, Sam Noble. And we're so happy you're joining us today. If you're watching the live version of this broadcast, welcome. Feel free to chat with us in the live chat. If you're watching the recorded version of this video and you have any questions after it's over, just type them in the comments and we'll answer every single one of those. We're really excited for today's live stream. We are gonna be showing you an overview of our pastured poultry operations here at Heifer Ranch. We're gonna be covering what you see behind me, which is uh, one of our turkey schooners that's filled with turkeys. We're gonna be walking around, showing you what's going on here with some of the equipment, going inside, checking out the birds, and then we're gonna hop in the gator, drive a few minutes down the road, and show you one of our chicken schooners as well that is full of birds too. Yeah? Yes. And uh, lots of equipment, lots of stuff to show you. So we're gonna cover a lot. We're gonna answer your questions. Uh, we're hopefully have a great conversation and a great time. It's a beautiful day here and we got so much to talk about and to show you. Um, like I said, if you have questions, please communicate with us and, and we'll do our best to answer as many of those as we can. Um, stay tuned until the end of the show. We're gonna be talking about the avian, avian influenza issue that is going on in North America right now um, and what we're doing to try to mitigate against that. If you have questions about that or dealing with that on your farm, uh, we would love to have that conversation with you as well. And Sam's gonna be giving also at the end of the broadcast some of her most important advice if you're thinking about getting started with pastured poultry. Uh, so you won't wanna miss that. We'll probably do some merchandise giveaways as well. Lots of stuff to come. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started with the tour. Sam, how's it going? How are you today? I'm excellent. This is my favorite topic is turkeys, especially pastured turkeys. So I'm so excited that I finally get to share with you guys our pastured turkey live for the first time. This is the first turkey live yes. stream. So I'm super excited about that. So this... Let's, let's talk turkey. Let's talk turkey. Turkey <laughs> Sorry, talk. I had to. <laughs> Well, I'm going to throw in another pun. I think this day is more perfect than April 25th for the Miss Congeniality fans out there. Yes. <laughs> um, so this is awesome. So today we are going to talk about our turkeys in the schooner and then drive down to our chickens in the pasture. So obviously right now we are next to our turkey schooner, which is a little bit different style if you've seen our chicken schooners. So we're going to kind of talk about the differences in that and the type of structure so this turkey schooner is 48 by 20 feet which gives you about 960 square foot basically that what i like about this schooner versus the one that we'll see when we drive down to the chicken pasture we you'll see that the chicken schooner has bars in the bottom and that kind of inhibits the taller turkeys from walking through freely in the schooner without having to duck under so that's one of the things that I like about this schooner. Um, this schooner is made by the Yoder family and in Missouri, in Dixon, Missouri. So they manufactured these schooners for us. And so basically this schooner is on skids similar to the prairie schooner that we'll see down in the bottoms. We pull this forward every day there is no floor in the bottom of it. It basically is a coop that allows the birds to be on the pasture with also being protected on top from the sun, from the rain. It also keeps them caged up inside the schooner so that they don't, they can't get out and they can't get into trouble or that predators and other animals can't get back inside. So in order to protect them from the predators, we have two types of fencing along the bottom here. So we have on the outside, we have high tinsel wire all along, um, all the way up to maybe about four foot high. And we have chicken wire right behind that. So basically that will protect you know, from the larger animals that we have around here that are predatory. Skunks are number one for our chickens anyways. And we have raccoons, we have coyotes, we have um, mountain lions, you know, well, maybe not mountain lions. What? I've heard of, I've heard. Bobcats, I've heard, that's, what I'm, yes. that's the word I'm looking for. Bobcats I've seen. There has been a mountain lion before though. Oof. Not, uh, not often. <laughs> Hopefully, so, so far I haven't come across 
one at our schooners um, and we've even sighted bears around here. Yep. So that's another one that we have to protect from getting inside. Um, and so this tarp will protect them from the weather, it'll protect them from the sun, it'll give them some nice shade on a hot day like this. We also have them conveniently parked underneath a tree, so that'll give them the extra shade for this hot day. And that's something you do typically with turkeys as much as you can, right? Yeah, as much as I can, I'll drive them up along the trees, especially when they're older and they're larger and they have a harder time, you know, keeping cool out. So we give them an extra added tree so that when we do have them outside of the schooner, they, they have that area that they can go to that's comfortable outside of the schooner without having to go back inside the schooner because of the heat and the sun. Mm -hmm. um, so right now we are not day ranging our turkeys. Typically we would um, set up poultry netting in, in front of the schooner and on the fresh grass and give them that extra area to wander around and eat bugs and eat grass, that sort of thing. We are not currently doing that right now because of the AI threat and because Arkansas has issued a state emergency rule that um, has people keep their animals contained underneath a structure and inside a structure. So luckily we can still have pastured poultry though. So this still counts. Uh, awesome. <laughs> nice. um, let me jump in here just real quick um, and say hi whoop, uh, to some of our audience. I want to say hey to uh, Marek Horsney from Slovakia, Nidra Williams in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, hey, Brian Yost, welcome to the stream. Uh, Kennedy Reynolds, Ruth Arnold, Lion Bearcat, uh, so many more. Thank you guys so much for joining us live today. If you're just tuning in, uh, we're talking turkey right now. We're doing a pastured poultry field day here at Heifer Ranch. Going to be touring our pastured poultry operations and answering your questions. Uh, I'm Tyler. This is Sam. We're fortunate to work here at Heifer USA, and we're so excited that you are joining us for this live tour or the recorded video if you're watching after the fact. Um, and yes, ask your questions. We had our first question come in and it's actually something we've been talking about. Kennedy Reynolds asked, how often do you have issues with predators? So we talked about the potential predators that we have. You showed the chicken wire and everything. Yeah. Um, is, it, is it a very prevalent thing here? For turkey specifically, the main thing that we have seen is, is skunks when they're smaller and aerial predators when they're smaller when we are day ranging. So that's an important thing to you know keep in mind as we are near trees. That's just gonna kind of be a natural thing that's gonna come when you come up on you know some predatory loss. If you find them scattered around the pasture, that's gonna be an aerial predator typically. So it's gonna be something that kind of goes at risk, you know, gonna be one of the risks that you take when you have day ranging poultry. Gotcha. And, and I'm going to show everybody again, you talked about, you know, some of the perimeter things that we're doing to keep them secure. And then there's also, you know, this pretty heavy board and some rubber there that we can show again when we go outside. But um, tell me about that. Yeah. So this, these are our skirts. Um, basically, they are, um, I believe they're two by eight boards and some um, conveyor belt rubber held um, screwed on every so often and this just kind of allows the um, schooner to kind of be pulled over any rough terrain any bumps and without having the birds escape or having all these extra gaps and stuff like that in the front um, cool and did and you so, DIY that yeah I believe Christine did some people have similar setups like this I've I've seen different ways of doing it online um, where people will make them out of um, floor mats so that's another um, thing to consider if you can't get your hands on some conveyor <laughs> rubber like that then um, maybe you can purchase some welcome mats for your your schooner. Cool. Uh, another question, um, and we're going to go inside the schooners in just a bit. Got a couple more things to show you out here, but let's answer a couple, uh, one more question uh, from the ghost dancer. He wants to, or they want to know, can you use this same schooner for chickens? Yeah, actually we have used this schooner for chickens before. It is a lot larger than our 
uh, schooners down in the pasture, our prairie schooners down in the pasture, so we can actually fit more chickens in here than we can for the prairie schooners that we have. Cool. Um, and let's see, somebody was asking about the board that we were talking about um, and said, you know, what if your field has a lot of bumps, you know, do, does stuff get underneath it and what do you do to maybe plug the holes? Yeah, so stuff does get underneath it, you know, let's sometimes we'll come up on a, a large bump that'll cause it to go up <laughs> where a bird will come out, but basically... Unfortunately, either, these turkeys get pretty big, though, Yeah, too, the turkeys right? get big. They don't typically escape like the chickens will mm -hmm. or predators get in. Um, but either if we do come up a on a large bump, sometimes we will just go past it or we will stuff some um, reused or repurposed bag shaving bags that we use in our brooder oh, to, to plug holes. Gotcha. Um... Cool. Well, I hope that answers the question that we got. Um, let's see. Somebody asked, Fidel asked about uh, the cost of this schooner. I don't know if, do you know that off the top of your head? I, I'm sure costs have changed. I want to say that it was around $3,000. Mm -hmm. um, but with supplies and, and stuff like that, the cost of everything is, is going way sky high, so it, it, it might be more. I, I, I guess I can't give you a, a sure. definite price. Well, Fidel, um, if you want to shoot us an email, we can connect you with the fabricators of this schooner and get you more up-to-date information. Um, so before we go inside, I know we want to talk about this feed bin, and I'm also noticing you know, just, just the change in pasture here and how stark the difference is. Can you, can you tell our audience a little bit about um, this this split screen they're looking at right yeah now. so basically um even if you look in the past way over by the fence is where we started this schooner and now we've kind of gone past all the way up to here so this is our spot from a rainy day actually so we had to put some bedding down around the turkeys just to give them and so that that's this hay yeah so this is this is wheat straw that we use to help them you know because the pasture sometimes can get pretty wet and get a little flooded and puddly which is not good for the turkeys feet condition um, but yeah you can definitely see a stark difference between that side and where the schooner has been and this side where the schooner is about to travel mm -hmm. so basically it will affer and grow into some very healthy pasture grass yeah for our... they've got all, all the all the manure there and then yep. the bedding and everything that's great and we got a friend coming to join us yes that's there. sam that's the sheep dog <laughs> oh just checking it out seeing oh, yep. he heard there was a live stream wanted to be yes. a part of it cool <laughs> So, um, go ahead. Yeah. So I was just going to take you over here now. This is our um, Gravity Flow grain cart. This is one of the newer ones that we purchased specifically for the Turkey Enterprise um, because, you know, it's just a lot more efficient than driving back and forth from where our um, grain bins are located up at the chick brooder, which is a, a few minutes away also. So this just helps us to be more efficient. It, we got this one in Searcy, Arkansas, you know, something a little more local than the previous ones that we had shown and the ones that you'll see down at the chickens. Mm -hmm. But basically, this will help us to be a lot more efficient. So we have this door over here, which we can feed directly into a five gallon bucket. Mm -hmm. And do you just get the buckets out of the schooners and bring them over here? So the buckets will carry with us um, in the back of my gator. Uh -huh. So we'll put We'll load up the bucket and then we'll throw it in the back of the gator, drive right up to the schooner just to be a little more labor, you know, less less labor intensive. So awesome. Cool. And then this right here, what's this? So this is a window here and we can see inside how much feed is left. Um, probably like, looks like you need not to fill it up much. soon. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Well, if you guys have any questions, you know, about the schooner um, itself, uh, or, or the equipment that we're using out here. Go ahead and type those in the chat or in the comments down below. Um, and I think here in just a second, we're gonna step inside and show you the inside interior of the schooner. A lot of more to come in the live stream today. Uh, we're gonna be going until 3 p.m. Central. And after this, we're gonna hop in that gator right there and drive a few minutes down the road. 
um, and show you our chicken schooners and what everything is like over there. We're going to be talking about the avian, avian influenza issue at the end of the stream and Sam's going to be giving her most important advice for anybody who wants to get started with. Speaking of getting started with this, uh, Ghost Dancer 6 said, um, can you sell this as a service to people who want to improve their pasture naturally? So maybe like a leased operation? Do you think that, have you ever heard of anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that, you know, this can be fitting for just about anybody who wants to improve their pasture. It is definitely crazy the differences between the pastures that we have run our pasture poultry on um, and the differences of the ones that we haven't. So, mm -hmm. I mean, Donna Kilpatrick was telling me that, you know, when she, over the winter time, when it was just starting to turn spring, she was looking from her house and she could see the pastures. One pasture where we had run the chickens over was green. The other one was almost brown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's a, there's definitely a, a noticeable difference of health. So it's definitely something yeah. beneficial. It's for kind of, it would kind of like be a, a, a custom grazing solution, but with yeah. poultry, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, cool. Well, hey, thanks so much for that question. Um, that was a great one. Um, Another question about watering. Um, so how do you get water? How do you water on the field? Do you drill forward? How do you water these things? How do you get water to them? Yeah, so we actually have a water spigot that is way over kind of near those faraway trees there. Um, and so we just hook up hoses. I think we have like three or four hoses that run all the way to the schooner. And we can walk over on this side of the schooner and I'll show you kind of how it's hooked up. So here's our hose here. Um, this is just extra hose that we have coiled up. And so yeah, water and is- runs out to the- Yep, water is connected all the way down the pasture. Uh -huh. And we have this hose and this section here. So this is just regular garden hose essentially that we bought from in town. Um, and we have this connection bit is a quick connect. So this allows us to quickly disconnect and reconnect our hoses from the schooner, move them forward, pull the hose without damaging it. Mm -hmm. And basically just a lot faster than screwing a hose. Right. Um, and, and you may have already mentioned this, but how often do you move these schooners? We move them once a day. So basically these guys will have, have access to grass that looks like this tomorrow, so. Cool, that sounds like a good life. Another question from Sue Yost. Um, Sue wants to know, how long have you been raising poultry? Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I started in the turkey industry specifically. Um, well, back up, I, I used to be a volunteer on the ranch and that's essentially where I first got my interest in pasture poultry. Mm -hmm. So, and that just really stuck with me through college. And then after I graduated, I worked with turkeys for five years in the commercial industry and then moved on to here where I am. So I guess six plus years, I guess, altogether. Awesome. So, yeah. Cool. So, yeah. So fortunate for um, Sam to be sharing her time with us today. And she, quiet down guys, quiet down and gals. She mentioned um, that she was a residential volunteer here. So yeah. I want to take just a second to tell you that we do have a residential volunteer program here at Heifer Ranch. If you're interested in potentially coming out here and learning and working with us, uh, we have some really amazing and unique opportunities for you to do exactly what Sam did six years ago and who knows where you might end up. So if you're curious to know more about that, shoot us an email and we'll send you the information. Um, I wanna say hey to Sharice Shaw from our friends over at Grassroots Farmers Cooperative. Thanks for joining us, Sharice. Um, and then just real quick about the water. Did you say it's a well or is it city water or what's it connected it to? It is actually city water. Luckily for us, um, we have water from the city plumbed all the way to the ranch. And so then from that point to get all the way to our pastures, we have underground PVC. So this pasture specifically has a just a regular old spigot. The pastures down in the bottoms where our chickens are located, we can kind of show you the difference of that. It is a quick connect, so it's a little bit different where it's just kind of plugged directly into the ground. Cool, all right. Well, um, are we ready to go inside of a turkey schooner for the first time live on Hipper USA? Yeah, I think I'm about ready. <laughs> all right, all right, let's go inside and show you guys the birds.
I think they're wanting us to come in yeah. too. So. <laughs> They've been saying, what's going on? Put us on camera. Will you pull the door behind me? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so these are our turkeys. We have, these guys just turned seven weeks old and they are medium white birds that are and that's that's the the strain of turkey that we have so basically it's it's similar to the larger broad-breasted birds these come from aviagen in with the valley of the moon hatchery in west virginia they drive them all the way to us luckily <laughs> on the way in a very fancy truck this time. Um, so basically, we just get a few boxes of pults, start them in our brand new shiny turkey brooder, which has been really a dream for us this time. Or and and we'll, um, we'll talk about that again in just a minute. <laughs> yeah. Um, so basically, these turkeys will, they came out of the pasture or came out of the brooder at six weeks and now they're seven weeks old so they've been in here about, pretty close to two weeks now so basically they'll stay in this pasture setting as much as we can um, currently we have them in one turkey schooner because our other one blew away in a windy storm and with no turkeys in it with no turkeys in it so no that was otherwise pure, it probably would have been straight down that was pure unluckiest luck that we've had yeah. <laughs> so that one is being fixed up um and then we'll be ready for them next week when they run out of space here um and we'll be splitting them in half so if you if we want to take a look at you know stay on the topic of water so yeah. Basically, the water, this is down here where we had seen before. The water comes inside the hose up here. We have a Y valve up here with some shutoffs, you know, for maintenance or whatever that we can shut off. It comes down here directly into, if we want to show this side, we have some PVC pipe here. I believe this is half inch PVC with some T's that with an adapter and just a regular garden hose again. Um, so this is a pretty easy homemade system mm -hmm. that, you know, if I can do it, anybody can do it, you know. Yeah, so and this then, whole watering thing is DIY, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so then here's another adapter here that fits onto this portion is our automa automatic watering system. So basically, I believe these are called little giant mm -hmm. automatic water water bowls. So this is the regular size that you can get. Um, and they come with this complete from the brass down to the bowl. And this is actually the tur the king size for specifically for turkeys and larger poultry or larger birds or whatever you want to use for them. Um, nice. And so this is just a little bit larger, which I like for when they're older, because they have such large beaks, probably about the size of my hand, that they just, mm -hmm. a little bit difficulty to it'll, drink the smaller stuff. And it looks like it's probably not as likely to spill out. Yeah, yeah. yep. Awesome. Okay, um, jump inside and say hi again. Um, I don't think we're gonna do pasture ducks anytime soon. Somebody asked about pasture ducks. Uh, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> nope. Um, sorry about that, but um, let's see. Okay, no, I'll get to some more questions in just a second. Um, go from water to feed? You know, sure, feed? yeah, if we wanna stay on feeding. So these feed pans to us are new. Basically, what we used to use were the typical plastic red cool brand feed pans that were hanging feeders. We kind of went away from them this year because they're plastic and they have a short lifespan. If you're moving your schooner every single day and things happen, it, they break very easily. We had to, you know, kind of get rid of a lot of them last year because they just couldn't hold up anymore just from age and wear. So we've had them, we had them for a good while. And so now we've transitioned into these are cyclone feed pans that are um, made by Big Dutchman. So 
we've got we got these from a local farmer i believe he's about an hour away his turkey barn he had an old turkey barn that was shut down and we heard about him through um through our friends at dixon dixon poultry um, in russellville arkansas and they put us in connect in contact and so basically i went thrift shopping <laughs> and went to an old turkey barn and got these for twenty dollars and normal price is about 180 dollars wow so you rescued them yes <laughs> re 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 repurposed them yes so we gave them a second life a second chance at feeding turkeys <laughs> very nice so just uh, it just so happened that you you heard about it. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, well, I had actually been asking about metal feed pans and a different different styles and, and stuff like that, and I wanted something large for the turkeys that could hold a lot of feed. These feed pans can hold 50 pounds of feed, nice. which is really great because once these guys are old enough, they will eat about 30 five gallon buckets a day. <laughs> So it adds up. The, to, the whole batch will go through yeah, 30 so, five gallon buckets a day. Yeah, so we were wow. having to feed morning and afternoon and it was just very labor intensive. So this will help us a lot. Awesome, cool. And then how's this connected? So I've got these, so we used to have string and that this is also new. So this is one eighth cable. I don't know how you can see that, but yeah. this is one eighth cable um, that we also purchased from Dixon. This complete set is from Dixon Poultry. Um, they've been really good to helping us, you know, come with come up with these great things. Um, and so it's just held on up top with a cable clamp, and then and a little and a little spider web. <laughs> yeah, so doesn't hurt. Yeah, he moved in between now and mm -hmm. the winter. Um, so then it comes down to this S hook. These chains were actually already on here, but if you were to purchase this new, it, these wouldn't come on these wouldn't be on here mm -hmm. um, and so then they meet with a carabiner in the middle and an S hook here and then this is a cable adjuster where did you pick those up Dixon poultry okay great yes yeah. nice. so and yeah. is that still pretty easy to do even when it's full to adjust it or yeah it actually I mean it helps for me to be able to lift it up oh nice and then adjust it mm -hmm. anyways mm -hmm. um, this is pretty heavy so it's I honestly can't do it when it's just like that, but. Cool. All right. Um, all right. What, uh, let's see, where are we at next? So we covered uh, the waters and the feeders. Um, we talked about the birds uh, themselves a little bit, new breed. And I know you also have a record sheet in here. Yeah. Usually. Um, and I want, we wanted to show people that. Where's that one at? The record sheet is over here. Okay. <laughs> So this is our record sheets that is created um, by myself and Grassroots. They, it basically helps us to really keep track of the lifespan of the bird um, from when they were in the brooder um, all the way to, not that page, you know, all the way to now. So we've, we kept track of brooder temperatures, you know, just to help us, un you know, help us understand, you know, if something did happen, we can track back to it with a history. We, we keep track of the feed, the mortality, the, you know, we have a spot for notes and a spot for taking weights. Cool. And um, if you guys want to get a copy of, um, of this record sheet, we have a really amazing PDF that we put together. It's our Heifer USA Livestock Resource Guide. And we will work to try to get you a link to that in the chat here in a little bit. Um, or if, you, if we don't get it, just email us. But in that Livestock Resource Guide, we have that template, the one that we use for chickens, a lot of records that we use for pigs, um, and so much more. It's a really valuable document, so I wanted to make sure to let you know about that if you're watching this and you're thinking, ooh, how can I get that? We'll put a link in the description of this video after the live stream. All right, uh, anything else interior that we should cover? Um, if I could show you, so this is the scale that we use. Um, it's just a regular fish scale. This actually goes up to weigh pretty heavy, so our birds will be processed around 20 pounds. So we weigh them using this scale all the way up 
This will help us to keep track of growth rate and, and let us know, you know, where we stand and that sort of thing. So. Awesome, cool. Well, thank you so much, Sam, for showing us inside the turkey schooner for the first time. Um, I think that about wraps it up here. We're gonna go to the chickens now, if you're ready. Yeah. Does that sound good? Definitely. Okay, so if you guys have more questions about pastured poultry while we are walking um, over to the gator, uh, just type them in the chat and we'll answer as many of those as we can. Um, I see something about a survey from Joel Salatin, and I'm not sure what you're talking about, so I can't answer that, but thank you for tuning in all the way from Norway. That's amazing. And there, I see we got the link to that resource guide in the chat, so you can download that at your convenience. So before we head to the next pasture, we're actually going to spray off of our our shoes and and that sort of thing, um, especially our gator, which drives through, you know, other, the previous path of the schooner. So what I have in here is Viracid. Let me this, come around. This is a disinfectant. It, I like this a lot better than, you know, bleach, that sort of thing, because bleach has a lifespan of one hour once it's mixed up and it is unusable or ineffective once it's exposed to the sun. So Viracid um, is a really great product to protect your birds and if you're especially doing pastured poultry when we're outside. So basically I just have it in this weed pump so I'll just spray off my boots here and we'll spray the bottoms. So, and then we'll kind of give it a once over of our wheels. And this is a biosecurity protocol. Yeah, um, so. Just pre to prevent the spread of. Yeah, so this prevents the spread of AI. Mm -hmm. um, so as we're driving through pastures, we might come across something that's been exposed to AI. Um, with having this disinfectant, it will help us to at least decrease the risk of catching it awesome well that it might seem like an extra step or a little bit overkill but losing your entire flock is the real overkill that you don't want to experience so this is definitely worth doing and especially right now we do this in normal times but especially with uh, the avian uh, influenza going on so we got more to come to talk about with avian influenza uh, toward the end of the stream uh, this is just kind of a sneak peek of what we got to do in the meantime All good? Yes. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're going to go for a little drive and show you around a little bit and um, talk a little bit about why, why we're doing this, why pastured poultry um, is part of our system here at Heifer Ranch. Um, so Sam, I, I know, you know, a lot of the work that we're doing is focused on regenerative agriculture. Yeah. And how, how does pastured poultry kind of fit into that? Because we have multiple species here, right? Yeah. Um, how does pastured poultry fit into that? Tell me a little bit about the, the impact it has on the soil. So uh, each species that we have here, you know, fits into our regenerative plan. And in, you know, helping to give back to the that we've been using for our our livestock and the pasture poultry really helps with directly putting a concentrated amount of manure on the grass and you can definitely see the difference chicken seed. 
from February until November. So that's that's kind of what we're looking at. We we don't do you know we are in the south, but it does get to be freezing temperatures in the winter time where we are unable to provide water or sometimes a place without snow. <laughs> yeah. So basically we have that included in our rest period. So nice, awesome. Well, yeah. Uh, Type, type yes in the chat if you guys are enjoying this gator drive as much as uh, I am right now. It's a beautiful day here, and I hope you're able to see some of the scenery. We're almost to uh, our location at the end of this road. Kind of, uh, we're going to drive into the pasture to where one of how many poultry or chicken schooners are we running this year? Yeah, we have six chicken schooners this year. Um, and we're looking to get a seventh one so that we can increase our production. But basically, where we are headed to, there are three of them, so we'll see half of them. Um, the other pasture, which is, you know, a little ways down the road, has another, has another three. They're all the prairie schooner type schooners and that we kind of briefly touched on when we were up at the turkeys. Uh -huh. they're, they're generally all set up about the same. There they are, over there. That's where we're headed. How many, um, what, what are your goals for raising uh, poultry on pasture this year? How many um, are you going for with chickens and turkeys? Um, for turkeys, we have, we have a goal of 2,400, which is increased from our 1,500 last year. We'll be doing four batches of turkeys, and for chickens, we'll be doing nine batches of 3,600. So I believe that puts us around 33,000 chickens this year wow. in total. That's incredible. And uh, if you guys are watching this video um, and you're curious to learn more and you're not subscribed to our channel here at Heifer USA, uh, definitely hit that subscribe button, hit the like button on this video, like uh, John Lee said in the comments, uh, because we have a ton of content for you about regenerative agriculture, about pasture poultry, raising pigs on pasture, uh, a lot of you know complete how-to guides and you know just individual videos. So so much content. If you're into this type of agriculture and would like to learn more, that's what our YouTube channel is all about is providing educational content uh, for small-scale farmers to learn about regenerative agricultural practices like these right here. Hey, there's some pups up there having to see us. All right. All right, I think, th I think the next live stream should just be us driving around in that gator the whole time. <laughs> that was fun. It's definitely a sight to see. I never get tired of driving around in my office, so. Yeah, so uh, what are we looking at here? <laughs> okay, so this is our other type of schooner that we have. These are prairie schooners. They are made and manufactured by Featherman. Um, so these are quite a bit more expensive than the um, schooners that you had seen made by the Yoders. These schooners, run upwards of just for the frame, not including all the the curtain and the feed pans and all watering. These run a little over $8,000. Mm -hmm. So that's something to consider when choosing what type of schooner or tractor you might want to, you know, choose. And if you want to do pasture poultry, there's smaller options, right? Yes. Yeah, so this is the 20 by 40 size. They make a smaller size that runs around $5,000. I mm -hmm. can't remember quite off the top of my head what the size is, um, but it is And a lot smaller. of folks DIY their own. You, know, you can yeah. build small scale yeah, ones. For sure. Um, we're working on some content to share some new schooner designs, some smaller scale designs with you in the future as well. So if you're looking at this and you think, I, uh, that's a pretty big, I don't know if I'll do that. Um, you don't have to start with this size. You probably shouldn't. So <laughs> the, we've been doing this for a few years. Um, and so that's why this is the size that it is. So sorry, I yeah. just wanted to. Yeah, it definitely that took us a long time to work up to this size of, of house, of mobile 
range coupe. Um, we used to use some coupes made out of PVC. Um, we had the Salatin style um, chicken tractors for a while too on the ranch back when I was a volunteer that you know served its purpose when we were doing smaller scale. But as we've scaled up, we needed a couple of these, more of these now that there is a larger market for it. Um, so yes, yeah, so basically these are our schooners. The curtain does not come with it, so that's something to consider. The Yoder schooner curtain, they'll get the curtain for you. It's specifically made for their schooners. Um, we have this repurposed greenhouse plastic that the gardens was kind of phasing out of, and so we are reusing it um, to help keep the schooners warmer in these cooler months. I say cooler now that it's 85 degrees out, but we will keep these sides on until um, probably the next group comes through for a couple weeks once the next group of chickens are in there um, and it's consistently warm. But we just have these on here now to help keep it warmer inside. If it's cool at night, these um, curtains roll down um, much like the schooner for the Yoders mm -hmm. does. And, and when, 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 do you, when do you find yourselves rolling them down and up? We will roll them down when it, the, uh, when it falls below 50 degrees at nighttime. We'll also roll them down when there's rain, that sort of thing, when we get some inclement weather. We'll just roll them down so that the birds don't get wet. Chickens especially do not like getting wet, so it comes in handy. Awesome. Um... Where's the front? Which, 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 is this the back of the front right now? So this is the back. So what I'm standing on is where we were yesterday slash right before we moved them this morning. When we moved them this morning, you know, the chickens were on this. This is quite a bit of manure that they've laid down on. And they, if you step over here, this is actually where the previous batch was the last flock when they started. So this is what it will, this is what this side will look like when it's been resting for a month. So this is a rest period of a month. And, you know, granted we are in our wet season, it's rained a lot, the grass has grown a lot. But if we look down, we can still see some remnants of chicken manure. From, so mm -hmm. still needs a little bit of rest time before we come back. Gotcha. But yeah, it's pretty impressive to see just how much this grass shoots up and how green it gets here yeah. because of it. Awesome, uh, we did have a question. Um, Kennedy Reynolds, you use repurposed plastic for the roof cover also. So you got re repurposed plastic here, but what about the roof cover? So the, I wouldn't suggest greenhouse um, covers for the roof because this does get a, you know, take a lot of beating from moving every day. As you can see, this is kind of what it looks like. It's kind of, this is kind of aged. Um, what I would recommend is these like billboard tarps for these. Those are fairly easy to find in, in a little bit of everywhere. Um, and what we, we have them attached with wiggle wire. Um, and then, yeah, does that answer? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so build, use billboard tops, not, yeah, something, not, not something, the repurposed Yeah, something greenhouse. a little bit more sturdy because there is that, if you can kind of make out, this is held together with some fabric inside yeah. so that, you know, it doesn't rip that nice. easily. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna go to the entrance. Where's the, to sure. the door? I mean, we can go on either side. Oh, okay. um, All right, we're gonna step inside. All right. So curious to see how everything's going in here. Um, and got a, got the water hose here. You said that birds don't like to get wet. Um, what do you do in the in the summertime when it gets really really hot and they just want to take a bath? Yeah. <laughs> so um, our birds typically don't want to take a. The chickens don't want to take a bath. The turkeys will actually will set out a little bowl for them and they will literally go swimming for an hour or two yeah, yeah. Um, but the chickens don't typically like to get wet so in the past we have used a sprinkler system on the inside of our schooner and that kind of will mist down on the chickens uh -huh. and to kind of 
create some evaporative cooling. This year I'm trying something a little bit different to, um, to help cool the schooner itself without you know, getting the chickens wet. Sometimes when adding moisture inside the chicken schooner, it will increase the humidity and thus making it feel hotter for the chickens. So when the chickens are this size, this age, which is about six and a half weeks of age, they're very susceptible to heat, especially the Arkansas summers, which get to be 110 degrees sometimes for weeks. <laughs> um, so I can show you over here So it might be better we go on this side. So on this side, you can see this is connected directly to our water system at the end. So I just have this um, timer for gardening for waters that I have added to the water system. This will help, you know, I, I have a timer so I don't have to come down here and stand and, and let the water run through so it runs cool and helps cool the birds. I can just switch it to auto. And here I have it shut off because it's not that hot today, mm -hmm. but I have a shut off valve if I don't want to use it. This water will run outside to this, it's an obstacle course in here to this here that I have actually on top of the roof instead of inside the schooner. Mm -hmm. So this is a sprinkler that we just purchased at the you know local co-op. It has a lot of little small holes in it and on this white side. Basically it'll shoot a mist on so, top of the schooner uh -huh. and cool the top of the schooner from the <laughs> side. Excuse me. Awesome. So you're doing it on top. So yeah, if you've seen any of our poultry content before, like Sam was saying, we ran it inside, but this year you're trying it on the top yeah. just to cool the whole building down to a little cool bit, the building. create some mist outside yep. and cool down the surrounding air. Yeah. So these are, these are white on top. Some of them are black on the inside to kind of help reflect the sun, but it, even though it is pretty shaded in there, it does get quite hot. Um, sometimes there's not a lot of draft with tall grass around. So this will help it keep feel cooler. You I mean you'd be surprised the difference that you know yeah. of that it will make. But this will help to cool the roof on down. So. Cool. Well, speaking of cooler, it actually feels a little cool in the shade in here, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does. Um, and we have a great question from Boo Boo Bang Bang, who has a great name, and they want to know what is the difference between a schooner and a chicken tractor. So a schooner is going to be what you see these, um, this, the, it's quite literally the brand actually. Um, so we just call all of our mobile coops on pasture schooners. Um, it is the, it's, this type again is called prairie schooner. Um, so we just refer to them all as schooners. The chicken tractor, um, there's a couple different styles like the Soskovich style, there's the um, Joel Salatin style, like I said, um, those are going to be a lot smaller and you can Google plans for those or Google pictures of them and, and just kind of see the different types. Those are going to be for smaller, less birds. Cool. Awesome. Uh, thanks Boo Boo for the question. That was a great one. Um, if you guys have any more questions, get them into the live chat and we'll answer as many of those as we can. Uh, we have just about 10 minutes left, uh, and then we're going to sign off, but we got a few more things that we definitely want to show you real quick, and then we'll talk about avian influenza and Sam's big tips for you if you are thinking about getting started with pastured poultry. I know there are several of you in the chat that are in that boat. Some of you have been commenting already, uh, so stick around for a little while longer, and we're going to uh, answer some of those questions for you. So what else do you want to show folks with the chicken schooners? Um... I can show you a little bit um, the, so you can see we have those same style feed pans. We have the smaller um, little giant feed bowls that we had seen, or water bowls, I'm sorry, that we had seen up at the turkeys. These are made for smaller poultry like chickens. Um, if we go over here, you know, with looking ahead, these birds are six and a half weeks of age. We have, 
Monday, so today is Friday, Monday these guys will be caught, crated up, and brought over to the processor. So the way we do that, which you probably saw out in the pasture, we have, we've started prepping already, we delivered our crates already directly out to the pasture um, where the, ch the schooners would be at the time. These are our crates that we use. These are, um, they have this door on top, it opens like that. You put your chicken inside. This will fit about eight chickens, um, seven if it's hotter, you know, you wanna give them extra space. But this is what we use when we crate up our birds for processing. Awesome, those look pretty, how many can you fit in there? Uh, we put eight. Awesome. All right, so um, that, that I, I see the big stack all the way through there that you're yeah. talking about. So when you are doing the catch, you bring them out here and everybody just catches <laughs> all the chickens they can. So yeah, basically what we'll do is we'll have, we'll be at that point, we'll be closer to the crates. We'll make a actual catch pan outside using the crates kind of, you know, having a little pen outside. These flaps will raise up. We will pull the schooner actually off of the birds. And so they will be outside once they are outside and then the sun sets when the birds are nice and calm. They won't, you know, they'll, they won't be stressed when it's dark out. Um, and we'll catch them, crate them up, stack them, and then stack them onto the trailer to be hauled. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Uh, anything else or you want to talk biosecurity a little bit? Uh, we can move on to biosecurity. Okay. Um, so basically, with the threat of AI, it is super, super important that everyone do their, you know, do their part in preventing the transfer of it um, from, you know, whether it be wild birds or farm to farm or, you know, person to farm. That's gonna be a lot of your main ways of transference to your birds like us. So if, you know, for example, if you have visitors like we do, you're gonna to wanna to have them be away from their personal poultry, away from their any, even a house pet bird can be something that can carry it and they can transfer it. So we have them, we ask that they stay out of their own poultry for 24 hours and that they change clothes, change boots that they wouldn't normally wear around their birds and before they come over. So, and you're gonna want to, for, but what you can do is basically what, what you saw us do is spray down your equipment, you know, even between batches. And this is, this is advice for even any sort of disease that you might catch. And so, you know, like between chickens can get blackhead, they can be carriers of blackhead that can be lethal to turkeys. So that's another thing why we started with the turkeys first and ended with the chickens. So same thing with when you chore, you're gonna wanna start with the younger birds, go to the older birds last. So when we chore, we start in the brooder and we start with, next we'll start with the turkeys in the pasture and we'll, we'll have will end with the chickens in the pasture. So you're gonna wanna, you know, keep going, you know, on to the oldest. And you're gonna want to have, you know, separate equipment for turkeys and chickens. You're gonna wanna make sure that as you're um, driving through your pastures that you're not, you know, driving your gator, for example, in front of the schooners where the schooners will be tomorrow, for example. That's another way that you can track it. Um, being out on pasture, we are a huge risk because, because of exposure. There are wild birds around, but also we have them contained inside, um, which is nice, but wild birds can um, poop on the field and then we might move it over onto the chickens. The chickens might catch it, for example. That's gonna be one way that we could catch it and, or we might drive through some and the, the gator might transfer it to in, into the schooner. So that's why we avoid driving in front of the schooner so that we can keep that area nice and clean, for example, you know, so to say. Um, and then so we mainly try to drive behind the schooners to 
keep that, you know, keep us on the dirty side. So, cool. any other questions about that? Yeah, we got some more questions coming in. Um, so we'll answer a few of those and then uh, close out with uh, things to consider. Um, so one question is from Nidra Williams and asked, uh, do we stop feeding prior to crating for the chicken catch? Yes, we do. So we stop feeding them about 12 hours in advance before they, uh, 12 hours before they are processed. So um, typically around two or three in the afternoon, we will um, pull feed. We try, I mean, we try to have it so that they just run out of feed right on time so that we don't have to remove any feed. And then we'll either raise up these feed pans or haul them away so that the chickens don't have access to the feed because that will contaminate if they have a lot of feed in their digestive system. Perfect. Uh, another question from Andre. He asked about, uh, you know, a after you do the chicken catch, uh, how many days in between the next batch and what steps do you take to sanitize? So we have, so I'll, I'll have to think back to this. For the brooder, we have, we get a new batch every month. So April 15th, you know, March 16th, that sort of thing, um, right around the middle of the month. We have, between batches, we wash everything, disinfect everything with that same disinfectant that we showed you, scrub everything down. It is a little bit hard, obviously, to get everything spick and span, especially in a schooner. Um, but we do our best to wash with, we, we wash with just regular dish soap. Um, you can also purchase specifically barn soap um, and, and then just douse everything with veer sid like I was talking about earlier. So. Perfect. All right. Um, let's see. One more question. Um, KB Byrne asked, how do you harvest the chickens and is it revenue for the ranch? And I'll just start by saying, if you're watching this video and you're interested in what the craze for pastured poultry is all about and you want to try some pastured poultry from Heifer Ranch, check us out. Uh, check out Heifer, or excuse me, grassrootscoop.com. We'll put a link in the live chat and you can order products from Heifer Ranch and have them delivered right to your door uh, with our partnership with the Grassroots Farmers Cooperative that is a multi-member cooperative here in central Arkansas and the surrounding area, the surrounding region, um, that specializes in the highest quality, best tasting regenerative meats uh, I've ever had. So check that out if you're curious. Um, shameless plug. And uh, so back to the question though from KB, how, how, do, what is, how do we harvest them? Um, basically we bring them to a processor which is located in Clinton, Arkansas. It's about an hour or two away, I believe. Um, so then luckily they process them for us. We used to do when we were very small scale, we used to process our own poultry and we have, we still have that building with a lot of the same equipment. Um, but obviously now that we are at such a large scale, we don't have our own processing facility. So Grassroots Co-op assists us with that. They schedule everything for us, which is a breeze for me. <laughs> you know, it basically just helps me to stick with the farming. They help me with all the other surrounding things like ordering chicks, setting up dates with the processor, you know, the stuff that is more office -y type work. So. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Katie, for the question. Um, one last question. Do we, how do we mitigate the risk of snakes? Are snakes a risk for us out here? Yes, um, not so much in the pasture because we don't have large enough snakes to eat a three week old chicken, luckily. Yeah, that's <laughs> yet. good. That, that, yeah, that's pretty so, big bird. So, yeah, maybe if we had anacondas, but we don't luckily, thank God. Um, but we, in the brooder, our, our brooder, I have yet to see a snake, but I have seen one in the first type of chicken or the first turkey brooder that we had wasn't quite sealed all the way. Um, and I, we have lost, you know, some poults to, you know, it's usually just one, <laughs> luckily. One that'll get inside, you know, just sort of a typical rat snake. And so what, what do you do to mitigate? Oh, sorry, yes. <laughs> um, but in the pasture, it's not, Snakes aren't an issue for us. Gotcha, gotcha. For this age bird. But in the, in the brooder, I'm sorry, I might have missed it. In the brooder, what do you do? Can, to, to I guess we just, seal, we just seal up Keep as best we up. can. But Great. I tried looking for a hole the time that it happened, and I have no idea. <laughs> gotcha. 
All right, hey, great questions, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining us. I'm gonna turn it back over to Sam, and she's got some um, you know, things for you to consider if you're thinking about getting started. Yeah, so if you're thinking about getting started with your pasture poultry and you have some land, um, if you have a few acres, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have enough acreage for you know this pasture. I'm gonna guess that it's probably the 30 acres. So this is quite a bit of land that we have that will this this side and the other side across the road with if you guys happen to catch it is all one pasture which is called sunset pasture affectionately. Um, so we can fit nine batches of these three schooners within that um, amount of space. So um, you're going to want to take a look at you know what style of schooner or what size or what um, you know, if you want to go with a schooner or if you want to go with a tractor, everybody's preferences is going to be different. You know, that's why there's lots of different styles out there. You're going to want to take a look at your specific pasture. Does it flood every time it rains? Do you have areas that pool with water even on a sunny day? You're going to want to avoid those areas um, or you're going to want to reconsider you know, your ability to do pasture poultry in that spot. Um, so obviously our pastures do flood. We have, you know, the hay like we talked about. You're gonna also wanna look at your accessibility to and from the pasture. So if you need to skip hop and jump over to the next pasture, do you have fence in the way that you're gonna have to cut down that maybe you wanna think about putting a gate? So there's a lot of different things to consider, you know, when you're looking at your pasture before deciding to do pasture poultry. If you have just, you want to do your front yard, maybe you just want to go with the Siskovich style tractor, so. Cool. Um, and then I think that's, that about does it for us guys here at Heifer Ranch in Perryville, Arkansas. Uh, thank you, Sam, so yeah. much for giving us the tour today. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Subscribe, like, and follow for more. Uh, here at Heifer USA where we're going to focus on all things regenerative agriculture. All right. Any so last words? See you guys later. Thank you so much for joining today. It's, it's been fun. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll see you guys next time. Uh, I think next live stream is going to be um, hanging out with Donna Kilpatrick here at Heifer Ranch um, talking all about what we're going to do to get ready for the calving season. So if you're into raising cattle, uh, we have a nice, awesome grass-fed, grass-finished operation here. And Donna Kilpatrick is our um, land steward and ranch manager who has a ton of knowledge. So I'm really looking forward to hanging out with Donna and talking everything about what we're going to do to get ready for raising calves. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time. Bye.